Hey, today we're going to look at that number that every podcaster obsesses about, their podcast downloads, and really how much is a good gauge, you know, for your own podcast? How can you compare it to other podcasts? I'm going to look at all those numbers today, give you a comparison, see how you're getting on, and maybe talk about a few things related to those podcast downloads that will hopefully make you feel good about where you're at. Hey, it's Colin here from thepodcasthost.com and like I said, we're talking podcast downloads today. Now, the thing is, in a world of Twitter followers and YouTube subscribers, we're used to thinking of massive numbers when it comes to people following you, consuming your content. You've got Twitter followers and YouTube subscribers and, you know, hundreds of thousands or even millions. Podcasts do exist that achieve those numbers but it's just not relevant to their average podcaster. Podcast listeners, there's so much more of a barrier to hitting that subscribe button with podcast listeners than just hitting a follow button on Twitter or just you know skimming through somebody's YouTube videos and watching a couple of minutes at a time. Podcast listening is much more of an investment. People spend time with you, 30 minutes, an hour, maybe even a few hours at a time. And that's the thing, a podcast listener is worth a hundred YouTube subscribers, a thousand blog readers, a million Twitter subscribers, because they're so, well, not very trusting and not very engaged. Because your podcast listeners tend to be far more engaged with you, trust you, follow you so much more closely than your average subscriber follower on any other medium. That means we get conversion rates. You know, if you want to ask your podcast subscribers to do something for you, whether it's anything from donating to a charity, to downloading something you've created, to getting into your community, to even selling a service or a product, you can convert so many more higher percentage of your podcast listeners into doing that than you could in any other medium, okay? It's possible, it's feasible to get like 50% of your podcast listeners into your ecosystem, taking part in the things that you do and actually really engaging with you. Whereas that's so much harder with the kind of low attention medium, which is YouTube, or the hugely low attention medium, people just skimming through your blog, for example, or social media. So I hope that gives you an idea around the comparison, how a thousand podcast subscribers, I would argue is worth 10,000 or 50,000 YouTube subscribers in terms of income, revenue, trust, worth 100,000 or more blog subscribers or social media subscribers in terms of how those people trust and engage with you. Now we put on top of that your topic, your niche, and that's an even worse comparison. If you compare your average you know, uh, podcast about football or a podcast about politics, something that's of interest to a huge audience around the world, and then you say, oh, my show about breeding white um, dwarf hamsters, uh, it's only getting 100 downloads at a time. Well, obviously, it's not going to get the same kind of numbers. You know, you get a Game of Thrones show or something like that with literally tens of millions of people following that show. It's just not a comparison. So you should really think about the size of your audience, you know, uh, how many people breed white uh, dwarf hamsters in the world, how many of those people can you get to listen to your podcast. And once you start to think about that, the size of your potential audience, the maximum audience, it starts to give you a much bigger sense of achievement, even if your numbers are not as high as your friend who's getting 100,000 downloads for his football podcast or her Game of Thrones podcast. Hopefully that gives you another way to compare those numbers in a way that makes you feel better about it. All right, having put a qualifier around what these numbers mean, not getting too worked up about the size, <laughs> I know, you still want to know average podcast download numbers, you know? You want to see how many podcast downloads other people get. What's that average downloads <laughs> you know, what does it look like? So you can compare. Well, I've got stats from Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout are one of the top podcast hosts out there. They have 85,000 shows as last count on their podcast platform. Um, it's a big proportion of shows. Are, they're arguably the biggest in terms of, uh, you know, reporting, seeing how many shows are on their platform. So the stats that they show for 85,000 total podcasts, uh, it's a pretty good gauge in terms of how many downloads your average podcast gets. So so let's take a quick look at this. So Buzzsprout show 
Um, and you can look at these as well on the platform uh, stats page on the Buzzsprout platform. <laughs> keep saying it wrong. Buzzsprout, the Buzzsprout platform. Uh, so you can go to the Buzzsprout platform page, uh, look at their stats. We'll put that in the description. So pop down into the description and you'll see a link straight to the Buzzsprout stats if you want to get the, the most up to date. They update it every month. But right now, if your new episode gets, you know, um, downloads per episode, we're looking here. So this is an overall download stats. This is downloads per episode, which is the best way to measure download stats um, because you know, you're looking then at your current subscribers. If it's downloads per episode, that's the number of people currently subscribing to your show, currently following along, as opposed to downloads to <clears throat> to back catalog, to you know, people that are finding you, um, or even downloads that you've achieved, you know, months and months ago or a year ago that go into your total downloads. So if your new episode gets within seven days of its release, more than 26 downloads, 26. So that's just two, six, okay? Literally 26 people. You're already in the top 50% of podcasts, all right? So that says to me, that kind of median uh, mathematical level, like right in the middle, 26 is that average, all right? So that's not many. You Well, you think, but I mean, if you think, you go and do a talk every single week, think of a room in front of you, 26 people turning up. 26 people is quite a lot of people. If they turn up every single week to listen to you talk, that's great. Like, that's a pretty amazing thing. I'll go into the more, I'll go into the higher numbers, don't worry, when you get higher. Um, but just to put it in context, 26 people. And like I said earlier, in the earlier chapter, podcast listeners are so much higher quality. You run a show with great quality information, great coaching, great teaching. Let's say you sell a service, you're a coach, I, and you sell a $1,000 a month coaching service, okay? So it's $1,000 a month. You spend a few hours with these people every single week, quite high touch, quite high quality, um, and you, you, know, you, you help them with a problem that they have in your niche, you could convert half of those people. 26 downloads per episode could turn into, let's say, half that. 13 people subscribe into your $1,000 a month course because they're following along, they're building trust, they're building engagement. And if you're niching down, if you have a really specific topic that you cover, you're going to be so relevant to every single one of those 26 people. That's why podcast listeners are so valuable because you can convert them into customers, into followers, so much more easily than other mediums, okay? So don't get disheartened by small numbers or seemingly small numbers. In reality, they're not small. That's actually a lot of people listening to your stuff. Uh, so next one up, 72 downloads per episode. That means you're in the top quarter, top 25%, okay, 72. Now to get into the top 10%, so to get to the one in 10, you need to get to 231 downloads. All right. Now you're only getting into the thousands. So you're in the top 1% of podcasts. You know, your top 1% of all podcasts on Buzzsprout, this is to qualify on Buzzsprout, uh, if you get more than 3,062 downloads. All right. So 3,000 downloads per episode and you're into the top 1% of Buzzsprout. So I hope that gives you an idea. Like I say, top half, if you're already getting more than 26, you're in the top half, more than 72, you're in the top quarter, and then you're into the top 10% if you're above 231. I always find that's a good little, a really good milestone to, earn, uh, to aim for, is that kind of 150, 200 downloads per episode. A lot of people don't get there. You can see that from these stats. Three quarters of all podcasts never get to that top 25%. It's a funny thing to think, but that means that if you're getting 200 plus downloads, you're doing really well. You're doing top quarter, okay? And again, you could convert a good proportion of them. Like you run a decent service, a high priced product. You can convert quite a lot of those people into customers of what you do, okay? Your Patreon, something like that, donating. You know, if you have 200 listeners, you get 100 of them to subscribe to your $10 a month Patreon. That's 1000 a month. That's a decent little income to come, up, come just from a podcast. Okay, so that's the downloads. Um, now, that hopefully gives you an idea around the average. Okay, so that will give you a comparison to see where you're at. Again, though, keep in mind, niche counts for a lot here. 
you know, if you're doing a very general, uh, it's that a Game of Thrones podcast, something like that, then you're much more likely to get a higher proportion of listeners. But then because you're a much more general topic, potentially your engagement with those listeners is not so strong. Whereas if you're a really niche topic, you'll have smaller numbers because it's a smaller market. But because you're so focused on that topic, those people are so much more engaged and so much more valuable to you as podcast listeners. Now, just quickly, it's worth bearing in mind, because we hear this quite often, my podcast host has not given me enough help in growing my show. Really, the hosting platform, they can give you the stats, but it's not down to them to help you grow your show. So again, look at some description, uh, sorry, some links in the description around where we can show you how to grow your show. We've got loads of resources on thepodcasthost.com around how to grow your show. Um, And you can find out much more about how to get those listener numbers up from wherever you are right now. So quickly to cover the difference between downloads per episode and monthly downloads, because I've seen this shift a lot in the last couple of years. Back five years ago, all of the download numbers you'd ever hear about were downloads per episode, okay? So what did your latest episode get in its first seven days and its first 30 days? It's because sponsorship tended to work on that basis. If you get a sponsor, they'll go back a month, okay? They'll go back to the most recent episode that's been live for 30 days and look at what its download numbers were over 30 days. And they'll usually go back maybe another four. So they'll look at four episodes that have all been live for at least 30 days and look at the average downloads for all four of them over 30 days. So how many people downloaded that episode within the first month, essentially? And that is what you would tend to base the price of sponsoring your show on. It tends to be a CPM, cost per meal. So you pay a certain amount per thousand downloads. So a common one might be $25 is kind of a common price for a mid-roll ad uh, as a cost per meal. So $25 per thousand downloads per episode for the first 30 days. So there's a lot of little caveats in there. That's how sponsorship was based. More recently, people seem to concentrate on overall downloads per month. And that's fine. It still gives you a trend. You know, if your downloads per month is going up, it still gives you a trend that you're increasing. But that downloads per month might be increasing more because you're getting regular episodes out. We have a show that goes out daily, for example, Pocket Size Podcasting, it's called. It's a little tip every day about how to run a podcast, how to make it successful, how to build a successful podcast, I should say. Now, it goes out because it goes out every day. Um, It's quite a niche topic, podcasting. It's a daily show, which tend to be quite niche in themselves, people looking for that. So the numbers per episode for that show are quite modest. They're in the, the, you know, under 100 per episode right now. We've only had it out for a few months. Quite modest, but because we're releasing it every day, we've already got nearly 100 episodes out. People are going back and downloading the back catalogue. Somebody finds the latest episode, they'll listen to 20 or 30. So that's like 30 downloads for that one person within a month. So that inflates the monthly numbers pretty heavily, okay? So even though that show isn't getting a whole lot of subscribers at this early stage, the monthly download numbers make it look like it's much higher because of the format of the show. Whereas if you had a weekly show that was doing 500 downloads per episode, doing really well, but you're only releasing four per month, Maybe there's less incentive to go back to the back catalog with that one as well. Your monthly overall downloads might be lower, okay? So that's just to explain the difference. If you want to get a really solid gauge of how you're growing your subscribers, look at downloads per episode rather than monthly downloads. So I hope that's given you a few different ways to think about download numbers giving you a way to, you know, compare your own in a, in a healthy, positive way. I hope those Buzzsprout numbers as well has shown you that uh, numbers tend to be lower than people expect. I think those average numbers, they always surprise people that they're as low as they are. Uh, and all these podcasts are still successful. They still have engaging, uh, engaged audiences and still continue because they still do well, even with numbers in the hundreds or even the double figures. So I hope that's useful. You can always go and check out the latest Buzzsprout stats, of course. I'll put a link in the description below. You can go and check them out. But the key thing at this point, I think, is download numbers. You can increase them. Do 
you know, have a look at them every now and again. Don't get obsessed, but they are a good measure. They're a trend on whether you're putting out good content and whether you're improving your content, whether you're uh, doing good work and growing that audience. So I've got a few resources for you. There'll be links to all of these in the description below, but have a look through these. One thing that makes a big difference, for example, is your USP. What makes your podcast unique? To me, that's one of the most important things in growing your download numbers. Your podcast has to be unique. It has to have a unique hook. It has to solve a problem in a unique way. So there's a link down in the description to our Identify Your USP, your Unique Selling Proposition, otherwise known as How to Make Your Podcast Unique. Um, and similar, related to that, we've got one around creating a value proposition for your podcast. Really, that's about showing people why it's worth their time listening to your show. Again, that's about solving a problem for them, whether that's actually you know teaching them something or whether it's related to entertaining them and making them less bored, that could be solving the problem too. But we've got down one down there, how to create a value proposition for your podcast. Then we've also got, think about who you want to reach, okay? That's around personas, your ideal audience, stuff like that. Think about your ideal listener avatar. <laughs> We've got an article about how not to be boring. <laughs> Good thing in growing your podcast audience, how not to be boring, okay? A few tips at least there on how to make your, your content potentially more exciting, more interesting, okay? We've even got one about encouraging audience engagement, which makes a big difference. If you can engage the people that already listen to your podcast, that means you keep them around for longer. Uh, which helps to grow your audience, but it also means that they're more likely to tell their friends and help you grow your audience um, through their word of mouth, okay? So that's down there in the description too. And similar, give your listeners a reason to keep coming back, okay? So you need to put that into your show. You need to make sure that people stay engaged, that they come back week after week after week. That's how you grow your audience. And we've got an article on that down in the description as well. Two more, if you run an interview show, there's uh, an article we have around encouraging your guests to share your episodes. Not always an easy thing to do these days. And understand the most common ways that people find podcasts, okay? If you know the most common ways people find podcasts, then you can be there. You can leverage those ways to help grow, um, grow your own audience. So you can use these all as a kind of framework to start growing those download numbers because if you're looking at this video, you're interested in download numbers, no doubt you want to grow them. So I hope that has been useful to you. And of course, if you want more help with that, if you want some handholding, we do have our PodCraft Academy, which has lots of courses in there, one specifically on growth. Uh, it has a whole bunch of little tips um, and big tips actually that you can work through, do like one a day over a few months to really start that growth going in your podcast. You can get that over at the PodCraft Academy on thepodcasthost.com. And we'll have a link, of course, down in the description there. So I hope you found that useful. I hope that gave you some context around your own download numbers. Maybe makes you slightly less anxious, potentially. Okay, hope it was useful anyway. I'll see you on the next one. Maybe it's uh, 